I welcome you to my channel, subscribe and listen to my new stories every day. The fluorescent lights above hum softly as the four of us wander through the sprawling aisles of the department store. My wife, Emily, walks beside me, her fingers brushing against mine as we weave through the racks of clothes. Olivia, her best friend, is on my other side, chatting about something lighthearted, something trivial. Beside her, Olivia's husband, Mark, lags a few steps behind, fiddling with his phone. Do you think this would look good on me? Olivia holds up a floral dress, spinning it around for our appraisal. Emily laughs, shaking her head. Honestly, Liv, I think you could pull off anything. But maybe something less, flowery. They banter, their voices mingling with the distant sound of cash registers ringing and shoppers murmuring around us. I smile absent-mindedly, my mind half elsewhere. It's supposed to be an ordinary day, just a casual outing, but something feels off. I can't put my finger on it, but there's an odd tension in the air that I can't ignore. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's nothing. I'll be right back, Mark says abruptly, slipping his phone into his pocket. I've got to take care of something real quick. Want me to come with you? Emily asks, her voice a little too eager for a simple errand. Mark hesitates for a moment but nods. Sure, why not? I raise an eyebrow, but before I can say anything, they're already walking away together, disappearing around a corner. It feels strange, too strange. Emily's never been that keen to follow anyone, let alone Mark. But I shake it off, telling myself I'm overthinking it. She's my wife, after all. I trust her. Olivia watches them leave, but her attention quickly shifts back to the dress in her hand. Do you think this is too much for a casual dinner? I glance at her, forcing a smile. It's fine. It suits you. Minutes pass, and my gaze keeps darting toward the entrance of the store, expecting to see Emily and Mark return. But they don't. The minutes stretch into a quarter of an hour. Olivia notices too, her laughter fading into a worried silence. They're taking forever, she says, her tone uncertain. Do you think something's wrong? Maybe they got caught up in a conversation. Mark's always talking business, I suggest, though I don't believe it myself. My pulse quickens, an uneasy feeling gnawing at my gut. Olivia bites her lip, clearly as uncomfortable as I am. Let's go find them. Without another word, we start searching through the store, checking the electronics section, the home decor aisles, even the food court. But there's no sign of them. My hands are clammy as I pull out my phone and call Emily. It rings once, twice, three times, no answer. My heart pounds harder with each second of silence. They're not answering, Olivia says, checking her own phone. A flicker of dread ignites in my chest. Something's not right. We continue our search, the upbeat music playing over the store's speakers feeling more like a cruel joke now. I'm growing desperate. Where could they be? Then, as we approach the back of the store, something catches my eye, the changing rooms. The door to one is slightly ajar, and I hear a muffled sound coming from inside. My heart skips a beat. I stop in my tracks, dread washing over me in a cold wave. Olivia looks at me, her face pale. No, I mutter under my breath, though I'm already walking toward the door, every muscle in my body tensed. I push it open slowly, almost afraid of what I'll find. And there they are, Emily and Mark. The sight hits me like a punch to the gut. My wife, on her knees in front of Mark, her hands trembling as she clutches his belt. Mark's head jerks up in shock, his face flushing with guilt, but Emily doesn't even look at me. She's frozen, shame flooding her face as her eyes remain fixed on the floor. I can't breathe. I can't think. My mind reels, spinning out of control as the betrayal slams into me with brutal force. I want to scream, to yell, to tear the entire store apart with my bare hands. But I can't. I'm too stunned. Too numb. 
Olivia gasps beside me, her hand flying to her mouth. What, what the hell is this? Mark stumbles to his feet, pulling up his pants, fumbling for words. It's not what it looks like. Not what it looks like. I echo, my voice dangerously low. It looks like my wife is cheating on me with her best friend's husband. So what else could it possibly be? Emily finally looks up, her eyes wide and brimming with tears. I. I'm so sorry. I didn't. Shut up, I snap, my voice shaking with rage. Just, shut up. The room feels too small, too suffocating. I can feel the walls closing in on me, the betrayal wrapping itself around my chest, squeezing the air out of my lungs. My mind races, already concocting a thousand ways to destroy them both. Emily, my wife, my betrayer. And Mark, my so-called friend. I've been a fool, blind to whatever this is, to how long it's been going on. I take a step back, every fiber of my being vibrating with fury. I can't stay here. I can't even look at her. We're done, Emily, I say, my voice cold, final. You've ruined everything. I turn and walk away, not caring what they say, not caring about the tears on her face or the pathetic apologies that are sure to follow. This isn't just a betrayal, it's war. She'll regret this. She'll regret everything. And as I walk away, my mind is already plotting. This is far from over. I will ruin her life, just like she ruined mine. The automatic doors slide open as I storm out of the store, the cool air hitting my face like a slap. My mind is in chaos, a swirling vortex of anger, betrayal, and disbelief. Emily. My wife. The one person I trusted above all others. I glance back over my shoulder, half expecting her to come running after me, to try to explain herself. But she doesn't. Neither does Mark. Cowards. Olivia is right behind me, her steps quick and nervous. Her face is pale, her eyes wide with shock. I can't believe this. I just. I don't even know what to say. I stop in the parking lot, the realization sinking deeper. My wife, my Emily, was on her knees, satisfying Mark like I was nothing. Like I didn't exist. I clench my fists, nails digging into my palms as I try to steady my breath. I'm going to make them pay, I say, the words slipping out before I even know what I'm saying. Olivia stops next to me, her eyes locking onto mine, concern flashing across her face. Wait. What do you mean? I'm not going to let them get away with this, I mutter, more to myself than to her. They think they can just stab us in the back and walk away. No. I'm going to make sure they regret it. Both of them. She swallows hard, her hand reaching out to grab my arm. Look, I get it. I'm furious too. But don't do anything rash. We need to think about this. We need to. Think about what? I snap, pulling my arm away from her grasp. There's nothing to think about, Olivia. They betrayed us. You saw what I saw. This isn't some misunderstanding. This is, this is war. Olivia's eyes narrow, her jaw tightening. I know what I saw, okay? But you can't just. I can and I will, I cut her off, my voice low, determined. Emily's going to wish she never met me. She thinks she can humiliate me like this? Ruin my life, throw everything we had in the trash. No. I'll ruin her life, and I'll make sure it hurts. Olivia looks at me, her face torn between anger and worry. How? What are you planning to do? I pause, the gears in my head turning, the beginnings of a plan forming. I don't have all the details yet, but I know one thing for sure, I'm not going to sit around and let this go. Emily needs to pay. Mark needs to pay. They both do. I'll start with Emily, I say, my voice steady now. I'll hit her where it hurts the most, our life together. 
Everything she thinks she's comfortable with, everything she takes for granted. I'm going to destroy it. I look around the parking lot, my mind racing. First, I'll drain the accounts. She won't see it coming. I'll make sure there's nothing left for her when she tries to leave. Then I'll file for divorce, quick, clean, and brutal. I'll drag her name through the mud if I have to. Make her look like the cheater she is, expose her to everyone. Olivia watches me, biting her lip. And Mark. I grit my teeth. Mark. The man who was supposed to be my friend, who stood beside me, shared drinks with me, laughed with me, while all along, he was probably thinking about this. About Emily. About what he could get away with. Mark's career is everything to him, I say after a long pause. He lives for his reputation, for those business deals he's always bragging about. I'll find a way to ruin that too. I'll dig into his past, find something he doesn't want getting out, and I'll use it. Olivia's eyes widen. You can't be serious. You're talking about destroying two people's lives. I meet her gaze, my voice cold. They destroyed mine first. She shakes her head, backing away a step. I get it. I'm angry too. But this, this is going too far. Too far. I scoff, the rage bubbling up again. Olivia, I just caught my wife cheating on me, in a store, in broad daylight. How far is too far after that? She opens her mouth to respond, but nothing comes out. She's as lost as I am, maybe even more. Her husband betrayed her too, and yet here she is, trying to talk me down from what feels like the only logical path. But she doesn't understand. No one could. I have to go, I mutter, turning away from her. Wait, what are you going to do now? Olivia calls after me, but I don't answer. I climb into my car, the leather seat cool beneath me, but I barely notice. My hands grip the steering wheel as I stare out the windshield, the sound of my own heartbeat thundering in my ears. Every breath feels heavier than the last. My phone buzzes on the dashboard, pulling me back into the present. I glance at the screen, Emily. Of course. The gall of her to call me now, after everything. I let the phone ring out, not even bothering to listen to the voicemail she'll undoubtedly leave. I'll deal with her in my own time. On my terms. With the phone still buzzing, I start the car and pull out of the parking lot, the streetlights casting long shadows across the empty road. My mind is consumed by one singular goal now, revenge. Every step I take, every word I speak from here on out will be calculated, deliberate. As I drive through the quiet streets, I start mapping out the next steps. The joint account is the first target. She won't see it coming. I'll move the money into a private account she can't touch, and then I'll start making the necessary calls. A good divorce lawyer. A private investigator, maybe. I'll dig into her, into Mark, into everything. I'll leave no stone unturned. The betrayal is still fresh, raw, like an open wound. But now, that pain is fueling something darker, something stronger. I'm not just angry. I'm determined. Emily and Mark have no idea what's coming. But they will. Soon. The night stretches on as I drive, the city lights blurring into a haze around me. In the silence of my car, I can almost hear the gears turning in my mind, the plan coming together piece by piece. Tomorrow, I'll set everything in motion. Tomorrow, the real reckoning begins. The morning light cuts through the blinds, casting long shadows across the bedroom floor. I wake up in an empty bed, the other side of the mattress cold. It's not unusual for Emily to be gone when I wake up, she's an early riser, always off to the gym or grabbing coffee with Olivia. But today, the coldness of her absence feels like a betrayal all over again. I stare at the ceiling for a moment, my jaw clenched, as the memories of yesterday rush back. Emily and Mark. The betrayal. 
my mind still can't fully process it. I roll over, grab my phone from the nightstand, and open the banking app. If my plan is going to work, I need to move fast. The screen loads, showing the balance in our joint account. I smile grimly. It's not a fortune, but it's enough to make a difference, enough to hit her hard. My thumb hovers over the transfer button for a moment before I move the money into my personal account, leaving just enough in the joint account to cover any daily transactions she might try to make. She'll never suspect it until it's too late. I get out of bed, pulling on a shirt and jeans. Today is about more than just draining the account. Today is the first step in unraveling Emily's life piece by piece. My phone buzzes with a text message as I head to the kitchen. It's from Olivia. Olivia, have you thought about what you're doing? I pause, my fingers hovering over the screen. Of course I've thought about it. Every minute since I walked out of that store, I've been thinking about it. I type a quick response. Me, yes. Another message from her pops up almost instantly. Olivia, you're scaring me. Please don't do anything you'll regret. I chuckle bitterly. Regret? The only thing I regret is trusting Emily in the first place. Me, she'll regret this long before I do. I shove my phone back into my pocket and head out the door, locking up behind me. Today's goal is simple, start the process of ending this marriage. Clean, fast, and merciless. I know just the lawyer to help me do it. I drive through the city streets, my mind racing with what needs to be done. The private investigator is next on the list. I want dirt on Mark, and I'm willing to pay for it. Every skeleton in his closet, every shady deal, every affair, if there's anything I can use to destroy him, I'll find it. I pull up to the office of the divorce lawyer I've chosen, Paul Rogers, one of the best in the business when it comes to swift, brutal divorces. I've heard about him from a couple of friends who went through nasty breakups. He's ruthless, exactly what I need right now. The receptionist leads me into Paul's office, and he greets me with a firm handshake. His eyes, sharp behind his wire-rimmed glasses, study me with the kind of calm that only comes from years of dealing with people's worst moments. So, what brings you in today? Paul asks, leaning back in his chair. I take a deep breath, steadying myself. I need a divorce. Fast. And I want to take everything from her. He nods, as if he's heard it a thousand times before. Tell me what happened. I recount the events from yesterday, the humiliation, the rage. Paul listens without interruption, his expression unreadable. When I finish, he leans forward, resting his elbows on his desk. Well, you've got a solid case for adultery. Depending on the state's laws, that can help you in court, especially if you want to come out on top financially. But divorces like this, they can get ugly fast. Are you ready for that? I don't care how ugly it gets, I say, my voice hard. I want her to pay for what she did. Paul nods slowly. All right. We can do that. But you need to understand that this won't be quick. Even if we push for a fast resolution, she'll fight back. And her lawyer will try to paint you as the aggressor, especially if this gets public. I don't care, I repeat, my fists clenching on the armrests of the chair. Whatever it takes. Paul scribbles down some notes. I'll need the full details, bank accounts, assets, anything you two share. We'll freeze whatever we can to make sure she can't touch it. I already moved the money out of the joint account this morning, I say, leaning back in the chair. She won't get a cent. Paul raises an eyebrow, impressed. Good. That's a start. Now, what about property? Cars? Anything else? I list off everything I can think of. The house, the car, the few investments we've made. It's all part of the plan now, every detail carefully considered. Paul taps his pen against the desk. We'll draft the papers and get everything ready. 
I'll have a process server deliver them to her within a few days. It'll hit her out of the blue. A grim satisfaction wells up inside me. That's exactly what I want. I want her to feel blindsided, the way I did. To realize that she's lost everything in the blink of an eye. I stand up, shaking Paul's hand again. I'll be waiting for your call. As I leave the office, my mind is already racing with the next steps. I need to deal with Mark. His reputation, his career, it's all fragile, built on appearances. If I can find something to expose him, I'll take it public. Maybe I'll ruin his marriage too, let Olivia deal with the fallout. As I drive back home, my phone buzzes again. I glance at it and see another text from Olivia. Olivia, please don't drag me into this. I just want to move on. I frown, the frustration bubbling up again. She's too soft. She wants to move on. Fine. But I'm not letting this go. I don't reply, instead tossing the phone onto the passenger seat. When I pull into the driveway, I see Emily's car parked out front. My stomach tightens. She's home early. I wasn't expecting to see her yet, not until the divorce papers were delivered. But maybe this is a chance to push things forward. I walk into the house, the door creaking softly as I step inside. The familiar scent of her perfume lingers in the air, and I feel a fresh wave of anger wash over me. She's sitting at the kitchen table, her hands folded in front of her, eyes red and puffy from crying. She looks up when she hears me, her lips trembling. We need to talk. I lean against the doorframe, crossing my arms. There's nothing to talk about. Please, just listen, she pleads, her voice cracking. I know I messed up. I made a horrible mistake. But we can fix this. We can. Fix this. I interrupt, my voice cold. There's no fixing this, Emily. You destroyed everything. She stands up, tears spilling down her cheeks. I love you. I was stupid, I wasn't thinking, but I love you. Don't throw everything away over one mistake. One mistake. I laugh bitterly. This isn't just a mistake, Emily. You betrayed me. You humiliated me. You've ruined our marriage, and now you want me to just forget about it. Act like nothing happened. She takes a step toward me, her hands shaking. Please. I'll do anything to make it right. I stare at her for a long moment, the rage simmering just beneath the surface. But I know it's not enough to yell, to throw things, to lash out. I need to be smarter than that. I need to be patient. I'm filing for divorce, I say finally, my voice steady. And trust me, you won't come out of this unscathed. The color drains from her face, her eyes widening in shock. Divorce? No. You can't. It's already in motion, I say, turning toward the door. You'll get the papers soon. As I leave the house, I don't look back. Emily's sobs echo in my ears, but they don't faze me. This is just the beginning of her downfall. The trap is set, and soon enough, she'll realize just how deep she's fallen. The days blur together as I wait for everything to fall into place. Emily has been trying to reach me constantly, calls, texts, emails, but I ignore every attempt. Let her squirm. Let her feel the weight of the silence. Meanwhile, Paul has been working fast. The divorce papers are ready, the accounts frozen, and today the process server is delivering the final blow. I sit in my car outside the house, watching as the server pulls up. A man in a suit steps out, a folder in his hand, and approaches the front door. It's almost poetic, seeing it unfold from a distance. Emily's betrayal started quietly, behind my back, and now her downfall is coming with the same cold efficiency. I lean back in my seat, eyes fixed on the door as it opens. Emily appears, her face pale and drawn, wearing the same expression of dread she's had for days. 
The man hands her the papers, says something I can't hear, and then he walks away. Emily stands frozen in the doorway, clutching the folder like it's a bomb waiting to go off. My phone buzzes on the passenger seat, Olivia again. I haven't responded to her since our last exchange, but something about today feels different. I pick up the phone and glance at the message. Olivia, I need to talk to you. Please. It's important. I frown. Important? After everything that's happened, what could possibly be important now? My thumb hovers over the screen for a moment before I reply. Me, meet me at the park. Half an hour. I put the phone down and turn my attention back to the house. Emily has disappeared inside, and I can only imagine the scene unfolding in there, the panic, the tears, the realization that everything is slipping away. I smile grimly. This is exactly what I wanted. I start the car and head to the park, the anger that has fueled me for days still burning hot. But beneath it, there's something else now, a sense of closure, perhaps. This is almost over. Emily will be out of my life for good, and soon enough, so will Mark. When I pull up to the park, Olivia is already there, sitting on a bench near the playground. She looks anxious, her fingers twisting together in her lap. As I approach, she stands up, her face tense. Thanks for meeting me, she says, her voice tight. I nod, standing a few feet away, arms crossed. What's so important? Olivia looks around, as if checking to make sure we're alone, before she speaks. I've been thinking a lot about what happened. About Emily and Mark. And. I don't think you know the whole truth. I raise an eyebrow, my patience wearing thin. What are you talking about? She takes a deep breath, her eyes locking onto mine. I knew. About Emily and Mark. My heart stops for a split second. What? I knew, she repeats, her voice shaking slightly. I didn't say anything because, well, I didn't think it would last. I thought it was just some stupid fling, something that would fizzle out. But it didn't. And I should have told you, but I didn't. I take a step toward her, anger boiling up again. You knew. All this time, you knew, and you didn't say anything. Olivia flinches but stands her ground. I didn't want to hurt you. And I was trying to figure out what to do. I'm sorry. Sorry. I scoff, my fists clenching at my sides. You let me walk into that store, into my own wife's betrayal, and now you're sorry. She shakes her head, tears welling up in her eyes. It's not like that. I didn't know how to handle it, okay? I didn't expect you to find out like that. For a moment, I'm too stunned to speak. Olivia, who I thought had been on my side this whole time, was hiding this from me. The betrayal cuts deeper than I thought possible. First Emily, then Mark, and now even Olivia. I let out a bitter laugh. You were in on this from the start, weren't you? What? No, it wasn't like that at all. Olivia protests, her voice rising in panic. I didn't know how to tell you. I was caught in the middle. Please, you have to believe me. I don't have to believe anything anymore, I growl, stepping closer, my anger flaring up again. I trusted you, Olivia. And you let me walk into that hell blind. Her lip trembles, and she takes a step back. I never meant for it to go this far. But now. I'm telling you because you deserve to know the truth. I glare at her, my mind racing. The betrayal feels suffocating, pressing down on me from all sides. Emily, Mark, and now Olivia, they've all betrayed me in one way or another. And I'm done with it. Done with all of them. Do you know what's going to happen next? I ask, my voice low and dangerous. Do you have any idea what I've already set in motion? Olivia blinks, confusion flashing across her face. What are you talking about? I've drained the accounts. The divorce papers have already been delivered. 
Emily's life is about to fall apart, I say, the words coming out in a cold rush. And Mark. His career is going to implode. I've hired a private investigator. I'm going to expose him for every dirty deal, every lie. I'm going to ruin him. Olivia's eyes widen, and she shakes her head frantically. You can't do that. You can't destroy people's lives like this. They destroyed mine. I shout, my voice echoing in the empty park. Why should I hold back? Why should they get away with it? She looks at me with desperation. Because it won't fix anything. It won't make you feel better. It won't undo what happened. I take a step forward, my jaw clenched. Maybe not. But it'll make them suffer. And that's all I care about now. Her shoulders sag, and she stares at me, her eyes filled with something close to pity. You're becoming just as bad as they are. I laugh, the sound bitter and sharp. Maybe. But at least I'm not the one who let it happen. I turn to walk away, done with this conversation, done with Olivia. But she grabs my arm, her grip surprisingly strong. Wait. There's something else. I stop, glancing back at her. What? Emily didn't want to cheat on you, she says softly. Mark pushed her. He manipulated her. She was vulnerable, and he took advantage of that. I freeze, the word sinking in. It sounds like an excuse, a desperate attempt to salvage something, but I know Olivia wouldn't lie about this. Not now. So what? I say coldly. She still did it. She still chose him. I know, Olivia whispers, her voice barely audible. But she didn't want to. I yank my arm free, my chest tight. It doesn't matter. None of it matters anymore. I walk away, leaving Olivia standing alone in the park. There's no fixing this, no redeeming anyone. The deception has poisoned everything beyond repair. Emily and I are done, Mark is about to lose everything, and Olivia, well, she's nothing to me now. The hate that burns inside me is the only thing that remains. This is who I am now. Betrayal has made me ruthless, insidious. And there's no going back. As I drive away, I know I'll never see any of them again. Not after what's coming. And I'm perfectly fine with that.